John, based on your background at RBC for all those years, you're very aware of the so-called Chinese wall that is supposed to exist between the investment bank that's underwriting various companies and helping to finance them uh, and the analysts that cover them uh, under the same umbrella at the same shop. So what should investors know when they're reading analyst reports, especially if they're quite enthusiastic about a stock? Yeah, I think it's a really important point uh, that investors really need to understand. Um, what a research analyst writes at a bank-owned or a, or a brokerage-owned uh, firm, uh, even though there are Chinese walls, uh, there are enormous conflicts of interest and pressures uh, upon analysts to say things that are not offensive uh, to the corporate client that you're writing about. Because oftentimes there's multiple different relationships. Uh, they have investment banking relationships. They also have buy side clients. Um, so they're trying to, uh, to um, navigate a very, very difficult uh, scenario. So one of the things that really we feel very privileged about is that we're allowed to actually not just read the research reports, but also talk to the analysts. Because what analysts say and what they're able to publish oftentimes can be a little bit different. And the nuances oftentimes are very, very helpful in helping you really form an, an informed opinion. Because the analysts are all very, very bright people. They know the companies intimately well, but sometimes they can't say the things that they want to be able to say. So there's nothing nefarious going on. These aren't bad people, but no. you like to uh, get them in a room one-on-one -on -one if you can, because as you say, you often get a slightly different story about uh, company A, let's say. Absolutely. You know, talking to management teams, which is what we do, talking to research analysts was what we do. Um, the, the, when you get them in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you're going to get a lot more transparency in terms of the overall picture that you really need to understand. And so how do uh, investors, uh, just in fleshing this out a little bit more, for a retail investor, how, how do they know what they're reading is, uh, doesn't have a certain bias or, or, or some of the bad stuff's been sort of filtered out of it? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know what the solution is. Uh, I mean, one of the ways to, to accomplish that is to hire firms like ours to, make, to, to invest their money. So it's a bit self-serving, but <laughs> it, it's the truth. Um, you know, I think you just need to go on. When you read a research report, you have to understand that there are conflicts of interest in the publishing, publication of that research. It uh, doesn't mean it's not good research. doesn't mean it's not going to be right. But you're not necessarily hearing the whole story. And I think you just need to go into that uh, understand, going with that understanding that what you're reading is not necessarily the full story, not necessarily a balanced approach. They will point out the risks, but they will possibly downplay the risks. 